Hi, I'm Colin DeFont. Welcome to the video abstract for my paper, Connected Components of Complex Divisor Functions, which is to be published in the Journal of Number Theory. This paper is about divisor functions, which are the classical number theoretic functions given by this formula here. So for any complex number c, we can define the divisor function sigma sub c by saying that sigma sub c of n is the sum over d divides n of d to the power of c. Now certainly the most common and famous divisor functions are sigma sub 0, which yields the number of divisors of a positive integer, and sigma sub 1, which gives the sum of the divisors. But of course this definition makes sense for any complex number c, and these other divisor functions have received a fair amount of attention, for example because of their relations to Eisenstein series, among other things. Now in 1986, Richard Latch decided to study the function sigma sub negative 1. He was motivated by some very difficult questions concerning the notions of perfect numbers and friendly numbers, and he showed that if you take the range of sigma sub negative 1, in other words, the image of the set of all positive integers under the map sigma sub negative 1, then the topological closure of this set is the interval from 1 to infinity. In other words, the range of sigma sub negative 1 is dense in the interval from 1 to infinity. Latch then asked if every rational number greater than or equal to 1 is actually in the range of sigma sub negative 1. And Weiner later answered this question, saying that the answer is very much no, in the sense that if you take the set of all rational numbers greater than or equal to 1 that are not in the range of sigma sub negative 1, then this set is also dense in the interval from 1 to infinity. Now I'm interested more generally in the sets that we can obtain by taking the topological closures of the ranges of these divisor functions sigma sub c for other complex numbers c. For example, here's a picture of what this set looks like when c is the complex number negative 1.3 plus i. And we can look at how this set moves when we vary the parameter c. If the real part of c is positive, or if c is equal to 0, then the range of sigma sub c is a discrete set. Also, if the real part of c is between negative 1 and 0, and c is not a real number, then I showed in a previous paper that the range of sigma sub c is actually dense in the entire complex plane. I also showed in the same paper that as the real part of c tends to negative infinity, the number of connected components of the closure of the range of sigma sub c, which I've denoted here by n of c, tends to infinity. Now, this does not exclude the possibility that the number of connected components could be infinite. For example, if the real part of c is positive, say if c is equal to 2, then the closure of the range of sigma sub c does have infinitely many connected components. However, Carlos Sana has proven, among other things, that if c is a negative real number, then the closure of the range of sigma sub c has only finitely many connected components. So the purpose of the current article is to extend Sana's result to the case in which c is a complex parameter. So the main result here states that if the real part of c is negative and c is not a real number, then the closure of the range of sigma sub c has not empty interior and has only finitely many connected components. Now the main difficulty in proving this theorem arises in trying to show that the closure of the range of sigma sub c contains a disk of positive radius centered at the point 1. And in order to prove that, we analyze the geometry of certain logarithmic spirals. These spirals arise naturally in the study of these divisor functions because for any fixed c, the points sigma sub c of p for prime numbers p all lie on a spiral. Now I want to mention some questions and conjectures related to this work. As I mentioned before, the key step in proving that n of c is finite in this theorem here is to first show that the closure of the range of sigma sub c contains a disk of positive radius centered at the point 1. Now Andrew Kwan has mentioned the problem of trying to find good lower bounds for the radii of those disks. And in fact, lower bounds for those radii would probably lead to upper bounds for the numbers n of c. Now I want to define d sub m to be the set of complex numbers c such that the closure of the range of sigma sub c has exactly m connected components. And similarly, I'll define e sub m to be the set of real numbers c, such that the closure of the range of sigma sub c has exactly m connected components. Now in a previous paper, I showed that the set e sub 1 is the interval from negative eta to 0, where eta is an explicit constant defined as the root of a certain function involving the Riemann zeta function. So a natural question to ask 
is if all of these sets e sub m are actually intervals, just like the set e sub 1 is an interval. Another question that I found particularly interesting is this one. What is d sub 1? So d sub 1 is the set of complex numbers c such that the closure of the range of sigma sub c is a connected set. But can we get some alternative description of this set d sub 1? And if not, is there anything non-trivial that we can say about d sub 1? Finally, I want to mention some recent work of Nina Zubrilina. She's obtained asymptotic estimates for the numbers n of c when c is a negative real number. And she also proved that the set e sub 4 is empty. This means that there are no real numbers c such that the closure of the range of sigma sub c has exactly four connected components. And so for this reason, I've defined a Zubrilina number to be a positive integer m such that the set e sub m is empty. And similarly, we can define a strong Zubrilina number to be a positive integer m such that d sub m is empty. And then the two conjectures I have are first, that there are infinitely many Zubrilian numbers, and second, that there are infinitely many strong Zubrilian numbers. Now this second conjecture might be a bit radical because we don't yet have any explicit examples of strong Zubrilian numbers. Well, I hope I've sparked your interest. Thank you very much for watching this video.